thank you guys uh, for joining us today for this very special broadcast of Channel Islands Live. There I am. Hello. My name is uh, Kelly Moore, and I am diving today in the waters around Channel Islands National Park. And today we partner with Ventura County Office of Education and Explore.org to bring you these live interactive programs. And I'd like to start by welcoming our very special audience there at our visitor center in Ventura Harbor. I know we have a terrific group of fourth graders from Rio Rosales. Hello, guys, and Buddy Bison's there as well. <laughs> I heard you, and hello right back. I know we have some uh, special guests from the National Park Trust. And in fact, I've got Buddy Bison here with me today as we explore. He's going to clip off to me and join today's program as we explore the underwater portion here at Channel Islands National Park. I have a great program in store for you guys. As I mentioned, we are underwater around Anacapa Island, which is one of the five islands in Channel Islands National Park. And it's within these waters that exists a very complex, diverse, and unfortunately, a bit threatened ecosystem. So we're going to learn a bit about this ecosystem together today and see some of the different inhabitants that call this ecosystem home. And then we're going to talk about some current threats to the system and ways that you and I can help protect it for future generations to enjoy. So let's get started with maybe an easy question for you guys. But if you know the name of this type of forest we are diving in today, go ahead and shout it out, guys. Let me hear it. Yes, excellent, a kelp forest, and it really is literally a kelp, or a forest rather, underwater, and there's lots of different players down here that keep this ecosystem in balance. The main character is giant kelp itself, and here's a nice individual to my left that you can see. Giant kelp is a type of seaweed or algae it's often referred to as and it's really well adapted for living underwater in this marine environment it has i'll show you a couple of the different parts of the kelp that allow it to live here first it has these very bendable or flexible stipes that look a lot like tree stems or branches but they're very flexible and that's important for the kelp to be able to move around because the ocean is never static it's always moving there's always motion here in the water it also has these very important parts here that maybe those of you who like to walk on the beach have seen washed up and pop them and they make a popping sound because they are actually filled with air that's an important function it helps buoy this kelp up towards the surface kind of like a balloon because something is shining down from up above that kelp needs to survive it needs this to undergo a process called photosynthesis you guys know what that is what does it need that's shining down from up above go ahead and shout it out the sun yes i guess i'm gonna have to make my questions a bit more challenging for you get them all right excellent work yeah it needs that sunlight to undergo photosynthesis maybe here's a bit trickier question for you during that process of photosynthesis what does the kelp produce does anybody know what is kelp producing as it More undergoes kelp. the process of photosynthesis what was that go ahead and repeat that please more kelp very good it's reproducing absolutely but we consider kelp a producer because as it undergoes photosynthesis it is producing energy for itself to grow and also energy for everything else that's 
living underwater that relies on the kelp as a food source, but it's also producing something else that is a byproduct of photosynthesis. All right, guys, what is that byproduct? Does anybody know? Anybody? All right. I'll eat. Oh, okay. You have to... Go ahead. Can you repeat that, please? I'm sorry. Homes for fish? It is, for, it is allowing for fish to live. You're right. Great habitat. That's an excellent word. The word I'm looking for, you guys, and you're all going to say, oh, I knew it, is take a big, deep breath for me. Ready? One, two, three. Oxygen. It's also producing oxygen. Oh, for everything that lives down here, it's relying on the kelp for oxygen, but also you and I rely on the seaweeds in our ocean for the oxygen we breathe every single day. Because over 70% of the planet is ocean. There's a lot of algae that lives in that ocean, constantly producing oxygen so you and I can survive above the surface of the sea as well. So let's move on a little bit and see if we can't find some other critters that live here in the kelp forest that consume kelp, okay? And I saw one, oh, here it is. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out if I can get to it. Once you see it, shout out the name of this kelp forest critter. Guys, the sea urchin lives in the kelp forest, also very well adapted to living here. As little bits of kelp drift around, you can see it gets stuck on these little spines. And then the urchin will use their little tube feet. You might be able to see them moving around in, in the water there to move that piece of kelp into its mouth that's situated on the underside of its body there. So it's really well adapted for eating seaweeds here in the kelp forest. And so you're starting to actually see the start of a food web here, okay? Kelp is, is the primary food source for the sea urchin. And a lot of things eat sea urchins here in the kelp forest. And there were a few of them swimming around behind me earlier in today's program. But also humans eat sea urchin. There is a type of sushi known as uni that comes from sea urchin. And so we're starting to see how things all work together. Now there's lots of other players in that food web. So we'll go ahead and tuck this sea urchin back down in a crack and I will start to try and find some other critters that play a part of the food web down here in the kelp forest. Ah, thank you. That's my dive buddy John there. He's gone out and found us another animal to show you that lives here in the kelp forest. Do you guys know the name of this critter? Slime. Really good, yeah. It is like a sea slug. We call it a sea hare, H-A-R-E. Okay, like the rabbit. You can tell why it maybe it got that name. Its head looks a lot like a, a rabbit with these big ears. But sea hares live in the kelp forest too, and they live on the bottom. They obviously don't swim too well. <laughs> they don't have fins. But they crawl around on the bottom, scavenging around, eating so eating algae, a lot of algae, and they'll eat some other decomposing matter down here on the seafloor. But these guys are very soft-bodied. Let's see if we'll give you a good look at it head-on. They can actually get much larger than this. They can get probably two or three times larger than this, in fact, and weigh almost 30 pounds. So they can get very, quite large, and they'll form big groups of them when they start to reproduce. <laughs> you really are getting a good shot. My arm's twisted around, so we're going to flip ya. <laughs> there you go. Getting a good view of this sea hare here. There's a few different species that live here in the kelp forest, but they all look similar to this one. 
They rely on the kelp forest for survival. A great habitat. Okay, another critter's coming. Thank you. Oh. All right, here's another very charismatic and popular kelp forest critter. Go ahead and shout the name out if you guys know this one. Good. You guys must have studied the ocean a little bit. You're familiar with some of these animals here. The lobster, the California spiny lobster, a bit different than other lobster that maybe you've seen that have big claws. Our lobsters here off California don't have claws. They do have legs, but the way they protect themselves or defend themselves is they've got these little spines on their exoskeleton, or the carapace it's also called here, so they can protect themselves because these spines are actually pretty sharp. But you can see how well they camouflage into the environment to protect themselves from predators, things that might eat them, like larger fish. And I have also seen some larger fish swimming around here, so I will try to protect this lobster as I'm holding it. But you can see how well it blends in to the seafloor to protect itself. And usually, these guys come out at night to feed on things like small clams, and fish, and sea urchins. So, you can see how it ties in to some of the other uh, kelp forest critters that we've already seen. So, I'll let you guys get a nice look at this, as maybe I take a question from someone in our audience there. If you guys have a question for me, go ahead and raise your hand, and Ranger Monique will call on you. How long can kelp be? How long can kelp be? How long can it live, maybe? Yeah. 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 Well, kelp can, is usually lives about a year. It has about a year life cycle. And, you know, kelp is one of the fastest growing seaweeds, or actually one of the fastest growing things on the planet. It can grow up to two feet in one day. That means in 24 hours in a day, kelp can grow almost two feet tall. Pretty incredible if you think about it. What if you and I were to grow two feet tall? That would be some, we'd be growing out of our shoes and our clothes in no time, wouldn't we? Well, I'm going to go ahead and put this lobster back. Actually, I might give it to my dive buddy if he's still around. Great. Thank you. This is my dive buddy, Ranger Bill. Thank you. And, ah, oh, they've got one more special thing to show you guys today. Oh, beautiful animal. Thank you. Okay. Okay, you guys, you are in for a treat. All right, do you know the name of this critter? Go ahead and shout it out. Nobody? <laughs> I think I, I'm hearing little shouts out from the back of the room. I think I heard it, the correct answer. It's a shark. Okay? So I know maybe some of you guys thought you knew it was a shark, but maybe not sure what type of shark. This one, I know, is a horn shark. And you can tell that because look at this horn right there. And also one on this back tail here. And those horns give it the name horn shark. And it's also one of the critters that live here in the kelp forest. Kelp forest provides a lot of food for this animal. Also great habitat for it to live in. It camouflages very well to the bottom. You can see it blends in. It looks almost a lot like the same color of these rocks surrounding us here. And it is also a nighttime feeder. So it comes out at night to feed on clams, small fish, snails, mussels. Oh, it's giving you a great shot of its face. And its mouth is on the underside of its body there. You can see, so it just swims around and scoops up things 
from underneath. And this is quite a beautiful example of what a horn trunk looks like. I'm going to go ahead and give this guy back to my dive buddy. You can chuck him back away in a rock. Thank you very much. Got it? Okay. Boy, you guys have got to see a lot of the different players of the big food web that exists here in the kelp forest ecosystem. And you can see how they all sort of interact in one way or another, either a prey or a predator, a producer like kelp, or a consumer of kelp like the sea urchin. And they all interact to form this balanced web of life. And we are experiencing a very healthy ecosystem today. This is a marine reserve where we're diving in here off Anacapa. That means there's no fishing allowed here or no take of any kind of anything that lives here. So you're witnessing a very balanced system. There are, unfortunately, as I mentioned, some threats to our ocean. Okay, and maybe you guys have studied a little bit about the ocean worldwide. Can you think of any threats that you know of, harmful threats to our ocean? And if you care to share, raise your hand and Ranger Monique will go ahead and call on you. What threats have you heard of that exist to our ocean? Go ahead. People. Is that what I heard? Yes. Okay, people definitely can have negative impacts. For example, uh, overfishing, which humans can do, right? Maybe pollution, throwing trash into our ocean. Those are harmful things that humans can do. But people can also have positive impacts on our ocean, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But does anybody else want to share any other threats that you know of to our eco to this ocean ecosystem before we move on? How is it like to go diving? <laughs> well, I enjoy diving very much. It's very wet down here, as you can imagine. <laughs> but we're quite warm, and we're quite happy. Enjoying talking to you guys. So some other threats that I can think of might be things like climate change. Maybe some of you have heard of that, where our whole atmosphere is warming. And you know, kelp really thrives in cold, nutrient-rich water. So if everything is warming on our planet due to things like climate change, you know, kelp might become very threatened. So there are some issues that we should concern ourselves with. And although humans can play a part in those uh, threats, we can also help protect this ecosystem in large ways, like establishing these marine protected areas or marine reserves that provide refuge for the critters that live down here. So that's more of a large scale. But there are a lot of simple, small things that you and I can do to help protect our ocean. Do you guys have any ideas about those things that you'd like to share? protection um things yeah like marine protected areas that is a great way that we're all helping on a large scale to protect our ocean very good now i can think of some small ways maybe you guys can help participate in a beach cleanup that's an excellent idea you could also throw your trash away in the proper receptacle to make sure it doesn't end up in the ocean Maybe we could all afford to walk and ride our bikes a little bit more and drive our cars a little bit less so we're not releasing all of that uh, carbon into the atmosphere that's causing our ocean to warm and causing our ocean or threatening our o the health of our ocean rather. So there's lots of little ways that you and I can help and even though they're small they all add up to a much bigger positive impact because everything 
we do on land affects the life of things in the ocean. We're all connected. And it's really important that you and I think along those same lines and always try to do our part in protecting things that live here in the ocean so we can all continue to enjoy it as we do now for recreation as well as a food source. Remember, we eat things that come from the ocean and we also rely on it for that ever, ever important resource, that oxygen that we breathe every single day. So join me now in becoming ocean stewards if you aren't one already and do your part to help protect and preserve this wonderful ocean for all of us to continue to enjoy today as well as for future generations. Thank you guys, everybody. On behalf of Buddy Bison and I, we would like to thank you for joining us today. And we hope the next time we see you, you'll be underwater with us here in the Count Forest of the Channel Islands. 